Hello everyone, my name is Natalie and I would like to welcome you to my YouTube channel called Navigating True North. Thank you so much for being here with me today because it's a very special day for me. This is my first video on YouTube ever. It's probably going to be a little rough around the edges to begin with because there's a whole lot of noviceness happening here, but hopefully if things will get smoother as I get a little experience. So first things first, you might be wondering about my studio situation here. It's unique and a bit unconventional. It's actually the back of my Jeep Wrangler. One of my favorite things in the whole world is to jump in my Jeep and just wander. No timelines, no agendas, just head out and enjoy some nature and hopefully find some adventure in the process. So my plan is to record my videos while I'm out wandering and hopefully share a little of that adventure with you too. I live just south of the Twin Cities area in Minnesota, so a lot of my videos will come from this area, but I do have a few road trips planned, so hopefully we'll find a little elevation at some point too. Today I happen to be at a very special place. My daughter and son-in-law have a little farm that they call M&M Ranch. It's a place I often go to get away, to hang out, and just love on some animals, mostly horses here at this farm. At the end of the video, I will post some of the pictures I take when I'm out wandering and adventuring today. It's difficult for me to know where to start my YouTube series. I guess it probably makes sense to start by sharing the purpose of my channel. I recently wrote a book called Navigating True North, and there it is right there which documents my journey from a place of blind, magnetic North faith to a place of bold faith. And I did that by utilizing my training as an attorney to find evidence for my faith and my experience as a mountain climber to point me in the direction of truth. Now, I began that journey at a very low point in my life when I basically questioned everything I once believed to be true about God. After reading my book, Several people have reached out to me and shared how much they can relate to my story and that they've had many of the same doubts and questions that I had about faith in God. Some seemed to be able to maintain at least some level of faith through those challenges, but many shared that they have lost their faith in God altogether. Walking away from faith in God actually seems to be a fairly common experience in today's world. In fact, if you search YouTube for videos about people's personal faith stories, you will literally find hundreds of stories about people telling how they left faith behind, primarily because they were unable to find acceptable answers to doubts, concerns, and questions that they had about their faith in God. That experience is becoming so common today that there are actually trendy phrases used to describe the process of questioning and walking away from your faith. Sometimes you hear it referred to as deconstructing faith and other times as deconversion stories. My personal story of doubt and questioning faith in God turned out a little different than that. I definitely went through the process of deconstructing my faith. In fact, I pretty much ripped it apart and questioned everything I had once believed to be true about God. But instead of walking away, I took the opportunity to dig in and do some pretty in-depth research on the questions and doubts that I was having. In the end, I was able to find answers that not only made sense to me, but answers that could be supported by evidence. And in the process of that, I was able to rebuild my faith foundation and find confidence in what I believed about God and why I believed it. That sets the stage for the purpose of my YouTube channel. First, I hope to assure people who are finding themselves in that position of questioning and struggling with their faith that they are not alone. It's easy to feel guilty because you question faith. We are often taught that questioning our faith is actually the absence of faith. I'm here to tell you it's okay to question and it can even be good, especially when you take the time to look for answers grounded in evidence rather than just ignoring the doubts and walking away. Second, I hope to encourage others to understand what they believe about God and why they believe it. Many of us essentially just believe what we're told to believe growing up, but never really understand why. That level of faith 
is really equivalent to blind faith. And as I found out, blind faith has the potential to have a very negative impact on your life without you even really realizing it. Third, I hope this channel can provide a place where people can openly and safely discuss issues they're having about faith without the fear of being judged or dismissed. So many people I've talked to essentially said they have nowhere to go to talk through these very challenging issues. I hope this channel can be a place to do that. Finally, I hope to share some of what I found during the course of my faith journey, to share some of the strategies I developed for finding truth about God, some of the evidence-based answers I found to difficult faith questions, and ways in which I have incorporated those findings into my daily life. So those are my hopes and dreams for my channel. I'm going to be talking a lot more about my journey and what I found on future episodes, but I would like to give you a quick high level peek at what I found and where I ended up. I'm hoping that that will provide a little encouragement to those of you who are really struggling with your faith right now. As I mentioned earlier, my faith journey began at a very low point in my life. Basically, all hell broke loose in my life, and I found myself at the bottom of a very deep, dark pit of misery. For those of you who have been at the bottom of a pit that miserable, you know that it's a very lonely and dangerous place to be. The reason I ended up in that pit, well, there's several reasons, and much of it because I made some really stupid decisions. But one of the reasons I ended up in that pit was the result of feeling very lost in life and feeling totally confused about my faith in God. So growing up, I was raised Catholic, and I had been given a lot of instruction and direction on how to live my life, and I'm going to put this in air quotes, the right way. In hindsight, I would say that much of that instruction focused on how to follow the rules and traditions of my religion. I was told and believed that following those directions would lead me to a good place in life, a place of connection and relationship with God, a place of answered prayers, and a sense of meaning and purpose in my life. I put a lot of time and effort into following those directions. But no matter how hard I tried, I could not seem to find that promised destination. And that is part of why I was feeling so lost. At that point, I would say I found myself very much emotionally doubting my faith in God. As I began to process that doubt I was having, I came to a very eye-opening realization. I realized I had followed those faith directions I had been given growing up, without ever confirming that they were pointing me in the right direction. I just believed what I was told to believe. And again, that level of faith can better be defined as blind faith. That realization hit me really hard. And the reason it hit me so hard is because I should have known better than to ever settle for blind faith. The first reason I should have known better is that I'm an attorney. And when I say that out loud, I'm actually kind of embarrassed. Typically, I don't believe anything I'm ever told without proof. Yet I believed everything I was told to believe about God without requiring one shred of evidence. I believed it because that's what I was taught to believe and I was told it was true. So the second reason I should have known better is because I'm a mountain climber. And I guess I'm not really sure if that's the right word. I've trekked to the summit of a lot of mountains, but I never do anything crazy like hanging off the side of sheer rock walls. So maybe I'll just call myself a mountain trekker. Anyway, the point is this. I know the importance of direction and the risks involved when you go the wrong direction. And one thing I know from all the hiking I've done is that if you find yourself lost, it's because you went the wrong direction. Based on how lost I felt in life, it was pretty clear I had gone the wrong direction somewhere along the line. At that point, I tried desperately to determine where and how I had gotten so lost, so I did a lot of reading and research on the topic of faith in God. I ended up finding some information that suggested that what I had been taught about God growing up was probably not altogether accurate. In fact, I would go so far as to say that some of what I had been taught 
had pointed me in a direction I refer to as magnetic north. More about that in just a minute. So now I was not only emotionally questioning faith in God, but I was now intellectually questioning the heck out of everything I once believed to be true about faith in God. To be very honest, I would have been pretty content to give up on faith in God at that point altogether. I was feeling pretty naive and ignorant, duped, lied to, bitter, angry, and resentful toward religion, toward Christianity, Christians, and just God in general. But there was one thing that prevented me from giving up on faith altogether. I realized I had pointed my kids in the direction of Magnetic North as well, and they deserved so much more than that. I knew I owed it to them to point them in the direction of True North. Now, I do want to stop for just a second and make it clear that I am in no way placing blame on my parents or religious instructors or anyone else who provided me with those directions growing up. I know that they provided me guidance with the best of intentions, and it was likely the direction that they received growing up as well. I've mentioned a couple times this concept of magnetic north versus true north. And I use this as an analogy to talk about some of the faith directions I was given growing up. Let me take just a minute to explain that. So when you're navigating in the mountains or out at sea or anywhere for that matter, it's very important to know the difference between magnetic north and true north. They are two different directions and ultimately two different locations. And while that difference is subtle, it's very significant. Magnetic north is the direction that a compass needle points. Since the compass needle is actually just a little magnet, it's attracted to the Earth's magnetic field. And the Earth's magnetic field is believed to be caused by rivers of molten metal that flow at the Earth's core. What many people don't realize is that the location of magnetic north actually moves over time. As the Earth rotates, those rivers flow and cause the location of magnetic north to wander sometimes up to as much as 30 to 40 miles over the course of a year. The main point I wanted to make for our purposes is that magnetic north is influenced and manipulated by ever-changing forces of the Earth. Hang on to that thought for just a minute. The Earth's true north location, on the other hand, never changes. True north marks the northernmost point on the Earth's surface. That location is also often referred to as the north. Many navigational directions are oriented to true north since that location never changes. While there is a subtle difference between the direction and location of magnetic north and true north, it is critical you know the difference when navigating and establishing your direction. If your direction is based on true north coordinates and you're navigating with a compass which is pulling you toward the forces of the earth, you may never make it to your intended destination and you could end up very lost. So how does all of this apply to direction in life? I would argue that it's just as important to understand the difference between magnetic north and true north in the context of life as it is in the mountains. I mentioned earlier that I found that much of what I was taught to believe about God growing up was not exactly accurate and equated to pointing me in the direction of Magnetic North. I say that because I've come to realize that many of the directions I was given were influenced by ever-changing forces of the world rather than focused on the direction of truth. Sound familiar? In my opinion, life's Magnetic North forces start with things like societal, religious, or other people's opinions, interpretations, and judgments. And when those things are motivated by things like ego or the desire for power, control, or wealth, it pulls people away from truth. I would also argue that attitudes guided by ignorance or the pressure to conform can also lead in the direction of magnetic north. By the way, on my next episode, I'm going to be talking in a lot more detail about some of those directions I was giving growing up that I now identify as magnetic north. So how do you go about getting yourself out of a pit and pointed in the direction of truth? The only way I knew how to do that was to find the truth about God. 
I could no longer settle for blind faith, no more just believing what someone else told me to believe. I needed to understand what I believed about God and to find evidence that would support those beliefs. Only then could I feel confident I was pointing my kids in the direction of True North. No big deal. Simple, you know, just find the truth about God. All I can say is, holy crap, was that a much bigger undertaking than I had ever imagined. I have tackled a whole lot of big ass mountains in my life, but none of them were as challenging as my journey to find the truth about God. There were so many times I wanted to give up, so many times I thought it would be impossible to find truth. Like every mountain I've ever climbed, I got there one step at a time. And interestingly enough, I was actually able to utilize some of the same concepts and strategies I'd used as an attorney and when hiking in the mountains to guide me on my journey to finding life's true north. Again, I will talk a lot more about my strategies for finding true north on future episodes, but I'll give you a quick peek for now. Strategy number one, is the Orient strategy. As I attempted to get myself out of that pit and orient myself in the direction of truth, I realized that my life experiences had left me pretty disoriented and confused. I couldn't determine which of the directions I'd been given growing up, which really now served as the foundation for my faith and beliefs about God, were pointing me in the direction of magnetic north or if they were truth. That meant, essentially, I had to start over and to rebuild my faith foundation so I knew it was grounded in truth. The question is, how do you find truth about God? I wasn't sure. So I started in the most logical place. I googled it. This is what I found. The definition of truth is this. That which is in accordance with fact or reality. As I thought about that for a minute, I realized that I already had some pretty good tools for assessing faith. My legal background provided me some experience with that, and I had done a lot of study on critical thinking, both of which are processes designed to find truth. I ended up combining those two processes into something I call the Orient Strategy. You guys ever heard of a memorization tool called mnemonics? I used it a lot in law school and to study for the bar exam. It's where you use a keyword and then each letter in that word reminds you of different steps or elements in a process. The word orient represents my first true north strategy. To orient means to align or position and each letter in the word orient helps me remember the steps I wanna utilize to align and position myself in the direction of truth as I'm considering and making decisions on difficult issues. So once I was equipped with that strategy for pointing me in the direction of truth, I identified three questions I needed to answer for myself in order to rebuild my faith foundation and to be confident it was grounded in truth. And those three questions were biggies. Question number one, Is there evidence that God actually even exists? I had reached a point in my life where I honestly wasn't sure anymore. I had both emotional doubts and intellectual questions about whether or not God even really existed. Obviously, all other conversations about God are irrelevant if I found evidence suggesting God did not even exist. In future videos, I'll discuss in a lot more detail about how I went about finding evidence for the existence of God, for now, I will share this with you. I found what I believe to be such solid evidence that I can personally never again doubt the existence of God. That brought me to question number two, which was also a biggie. Is there evidence supporting the identity of God? Now that I had evidence that God exists, I needed to understand who God is. As I began to research the identity of God, I quickly discovered that God was really only defined within the context of religion. There was no scientific, historical, philosophical, or other academic definition of God, just religious. That posed some serious issues for me since I was pretty bitter about religion at that point in my life. 
but because it seemed to be the only avenue for finding out more about the identity of God, I looked to religion for the answer. With that, I studied Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and looked at their claims concerning the identity of God. That proved to be very challenging from an evidentiary perspective. Most religious beliefs are based on claims that God personally revealed himself to different people at some point in history. How can you find objective evidence about that? Well, there was only one claim that I felt provided that opportunity for evidentiary verification. That was the Christian claim that Jesus of Nazareth inserted himself into the course of human history during the first century in Israel, that he died on a Roman cross and was believed to have been seen alive again after his death. Turns out that those few facts are considered historically reliable by the far majority of the world's historians and scholars, whether they're Christian or non-Christian. While that, at least on the surface, would seem to be implausibly simplistic evidence in terms of proving that Jesus defines God, it's pretty amazing the explanatory power that those facts present. Again, a lot more about that on future episodes. The third foundational question I needed to find an answer to was this. What message did Jesus bring to earth? If Jesus was in fact God who had come to earth, I wanted to know what that dude had to say. While the answer to that question, at least from a Christian perspective, seemed presumably straightforward, just read the gospels and you, you'll know what Jesus had to say, it was not quite that simple for me. This gets a little confusing, but in a nutshell, let's just say there are questions about the historical reliability of the Gospels and really historical reliability of the Bible overall for many different reasons. And I will be the first to admit that I think some of those concerns have merit. The question boils down to this. How do we know that the message we are taught today is the same message that came out of Jesus' mouth 2,000 years ago and not a whole bunch of magnetic north? My goal was to understand Jesus' message as free from human intervention, interpretation, and opinion as possible, because those things tend to lead us in the direction of magnetic north and the forces of the world and not truth. To make a very long story short for now, I studied the Gospels in light of the original Greek and Aramaic languages, soaked in as much as I could about the historic context of the time, and studied the transmission of those writings over the course of time. While there's a lot to digest in that process, I was able to find the direction I believe points in the direction of truth, supported by evidence, reason, and logic. For the first time, instead of seeing Jesus' message as simply the foundation for the rules, doctrines, traditions, and requirements of religion, I found the message to be all about love and relationship with God and one another in what Jesus called the kingdom of God. Despite going to Christian schools from kindergarten through 12th grade, that was a message I had never heard before, and it was powerful and life-changing. A lot more about the Kingdom of God message to come. So how did all of these findings affect my life? You guys, once I took the time to study the facts and to weigh the evidence for myself, when I was able to use what I had now proven to myself to be truth and stripped away all of the confusion of that magnetic north crap, something changed for me. For the first time, God, Jesus, and even the Bible narrative made some sense to me. Looking at that narrative for the first time without dissecting each and every word and making it fit into some rule or tradition made the pieces of that big, confusing jigsaw puzzle fit together for the first time in what I found to be a cohesive, consistent, and meaningful narrative. I will admit I still have questions, and there's still a lot of things that don't make sense to me, but what I have found allowed me the opportunity to build a new foundation for faith in God, and one I consider to be grounded in evidence and pointed in the direction of truth. For me, it boiled down to this. When you strip away all of that magnetic north about Jesus and God and find truth, there's not a whole lot to resent. 
There are no rules, traditions, or rituals of religion. There is just a message of unconditional love, acceptance, choice, and directions toward truth. By the way, that whole process that I just described, essentially figuring out what I believed about God and why I believed it, took me about seven years to complete. It was one heck of a hike out of a very deep pit, and I encountered some seriously steep learning curves along the way. But it gave me a new foundation for faith in God and the message of Jesus and a way I could orient myself to what I believe is the direction of True North. Once I was able to lay that foundation for faith in God using the Orient strategy, I needed to determine how that would fit into my life going forward. My life up to that point had been very influenced by a magnetic north. I needed to figure out what life in the direction of true north looked like and how I could protect myself from forces of magnetic north going forward. That brings me to strategy number two for living life in the direction of true north. Strategy number two is stand. As I studied the message of Jesus, I discovered that he actually laid out directions for living life in the direction of true north and what he called the kingdom of God. I have so much to say about Jesus's kingdom of God message that it will probably take me a few episodes at some point to share all of that. But it is an amazing and much richer and deeper message than what I had ever been taught growing up. I scoured the teachings of Jesus to find what he identified as the way to the destination of truth within the kingdom of God that he talked about. Once I gathered all that information, I again used my mnemonic tool to help me formulate my strategy for going forward. I used the word stand to represent what I wanted to do to follow the direction of Jesus, each letter representing something I wanted to remember to do every day. Again, I was amazed by what I found. I found that the directions Jesus provided were not focused on a list of rituals or a list of rules that if broken would send you straight to hell. Instead, it was focused on a set of directions for living life in the direction of truth and the direction that we were created to go. Again, I'll go through this in a lot more detail in future videos, but that gives you a quick idea of my stand strategy, which I use every day to remind me of the directions Jesus gave us for living life. is climb. My last strategy for living life in the direction of truth is based on what Jesus told us we could expect if we take the effort to stand. The reason I had felt so lost for the majority of my life was because the directions I had been given never took me to the destination I had been promised. So it was very important for me to know what my destination looked like, and it was important for two reasons. First, I wanted to have clear understanding of what that destination looked like so I could use landmarks along the way to verify I was headed in the right direction. And second, I wanted to make sure it was not more magnetic north leading me in the wrong direction. If I was doing what Jesus said to do and not finding the destination that was promised, there was something wrong. The great thing is that Jesus not only provided directions to that destination, he provided a description of what that destination should look like. The word climb represents the destination we are promised if we take the effort and have the courage to stand. I use the climb strategy to help me confirm I'm headed in the right direction and the direction of truth. Wow, I know I have hit you with a ton of information. I promise I will go into a lot more detail about all of this on future episodes. What I want to leave you with is my vision statement for life. It's something I use to summarize what I found throughout the course of my journey, and it will now serve as the vision statement for my YouTube channel as well. I believe passionately that everyone's life, my life and your life, has the potential to be a great adventure which includes discovering the purpose and meaning of your life. When you orient yourself in the direction of God's truth, you take the effort to stand, led by the example of Jesus, 
and you allow yourself to climb equipped with the power of the Holy Spirit that is within you. I believe that is true north. Thank you so much for joining me on my very first YouTube episode. I would really appreciate you giving this video a like or even subscribing to my channel if you feel like any of this resonated with you. I would also love it if you passed on information about my channel to anyone you know struggling to make sense of faith and desperate to find God's love and truth. And if you or anyone you know is interested in learning more about my journey, my book, Navigating True North, is available on most online bookstores, including Amazon and Audible, and I'll include links to those in the comments below. Again, on my next episode, I will be talking more about those directions I was given growing up that I now identify as leading me in the direction of Magnetic North. I'll be curious to see if it's something you guys relate to as well, so I hope you can join me. Now comes the best part of my day. I'm headed out to explore. As promised, I'll add some pictures of what I find while I'm off exploring at the end of this video. Until next time, remember that your life has the potential to be a great adventure when you're pointed in the direction of truth. Oh, I see my little friend Daisy Duke over there. Hi, everybody.